and welcome back to Friday Reads, where we help you find your next read. I'm Jill. And I'm Julie. And June was Pride Month, so we're sneaking in at the end of this week <laughs> with books that feature LGBTQ characters. So I'll turn it over to Jill to kick us off. All right, so my first one <laughs> is called Sissy, A Coming to Gender Story by Jacob Tobia. <clears throat> this is a heart-wrenching, eye-opening, and giggle-inducing memoir about what it's like to grow up. Not sure if you're a boy, a girl, something in between, or all of the above. From the moment a doctor in Raleigh, North Carolina put mail on Jacob Tobias' birth certificate, everything went wrong. Alongside mail came many other far less neutral words, words that carried expectations about who Jacob was and who Jacob should be, words like masculine and aggressive and cargo shorts and sports. <laughs> Naturally sensitive, playful, creative, and glitter-obsessed as a child, Jacob was given the label of sissy. In the two decades that followed, sissy joined forces with gay, trans, non-binary, and too queer to function to become a source of pride, and today a rallying cry for a much-needed gender revolution. Though revisiting their childhood and calling out the stereotypes that each of us have faced, Jacob invites us to rethink what we know about gender and offers a bold blueprint for a healed world, one free from gender-based trauma and bursting with trans-inclusive feminism. From Jacob's Methodist childhood and the hallowed halls of Duke University to the portrait-laden parlors of the White House, Sissy takes you on a gender odyssey that you won't soon forget. Writing with the fierce honesty, wildly irreverent humor, and wrenching vulnerability that have made them a media sensation, Jacob shatters the long-held notion that people are easily sortable into men and women. Sissy guarantees that you'll never think about gender, both other people's and your own, the same again. So, wow. Good way to kick us <coughs> off. And I'm starting with a graphic novel. And this is Fun House. You may be familiar with this. This was published in 2006, and it's the graphic novel that was turned into the Broadway musical. So in this graphic memoir, the author charts her fraught relationship with her late father. Distant and exacting, her dad, Bruce, was an English teacher and director of the town funeral home, which the author, Allison, and her family referred to as Fun Home. It was not until college that Allison, who had recently come out as a lesbian, discovered that her father was also gay. A few weeks after this revelation, he was dead, leaving a legacy of mystery for his daughter to try to resolve. This book was a Time Magazine number one book of the year, National Book Critics Circle Award finalist, winner of the Stonewall Book Award, and double finalist for the Lambda Book Award. The Broadway play that this was turned into won the Tony Award for Best Musical, Tony Award for Best Book of a Musical, and Tony Award for Best Musical Score, among other war awards. So, fun home based on the funeral home that her dad ran. <laughs> so check out this graphic novel. That does sound fun. <clears throat> this is for those of you who like steamy romance that may not be male and female. This one is male on male. For those looking for, uh, since 9-11, Brooklyn firefighter Griff Moore has wrestled with impossible feelings for his best friend and partner at Ladder 181, Dante Anastago. Unfortunately, Dante is strictly a ladies' man, and the fire department of New York is not exactly gay-friendly. For 10 years, Griff has hidden his heart in a half-life of public heroics and private anguish. Griff's caution and Dante's cockiness make them unbeatable team. To protect his buddy, there's nothing Griff wouldn't do until a nearly bankrupt Dante proposes the worst possible solution, hothead.com, a gay porn site where uniformed hunks get down and dirty, and Dante wants them to appear there together. Griff may have to guard his heart and live out his darkest fantasies on camera. Can he rescue the man he loves without wrecking their careers, their families, and their friendships? So, oh, hothead. And there's quite a few in this series if you like that. And my second pick comes from the nonfiction section this week. Um, and this is called Tomorrow Will Be Different, Love, Loss, and the Fight for Trans Equality by Sarah McBride. This was published in 2018. Sarah McBride is on a mission to fight for transgender rights around the world. But before she was a prominent activist and before she became the first transgender person to speak at the Democratic National Convention in 2016, she was a teenager who was struggling with her identity. 
With emotional depth and unparalleled honesty, Sarah shares her personal struggle with gender identity, coming out to her supportive but distraught parents, and finding her way as a woman. She inspires readers with her barrier-breaking political journey that took her in just four years from a frightened, closeted college student to one of the nation's most prominent transgender activists walking the halls of the White House, passing laws and addressing the country in the midst of a heated presidential election. She also details the heartbreaking romance with her first love and future husband, Andy, a trans man and activist who passed away from cancer in 2014, just days after they were married. Tomorrow Will Be Different highlights Sarah's work as an activist and the key issues at the forefront for the fight for trans equality, providing a call to arms and empowering look at the road ahead. The fight for equality and freedom has only just begun. As this author stated, we must never be a country that says there's only one way to love, only one way to look, and only one way to live. <coughs> nice. This is a debut fiction novel called Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Reese almost had it all. A loving relationship with Amy, an apartment in New York City, a job she didn't hate. She had scraped together what previous generations of trans women could only dream of, a life of mundane bourgeois comforts. And the only thing missing was a child. But then her girlfriend Amy detransitioned and became Ames and everything fell apart. Now Reese is caught in a self-destructive pattern, avoiding her loneliness by sleeping with married men. Ames isn't happy either. He thought detransitioning to live as a man would make life easier, but that decision cost him his relationship with Reese, and losing her meant losing his only family. Even though their romance is over, he longs to find a way back to her. When Ames' boss and lover Katrina reveals that she's pregnant with his baby and that she's not sure whether she wants to keep it, Ames wonders if this is the chance he's been waiting for. Could the three of them form some kind of unconventional family and raise the baby together? This provocative debut is about what happens at the emotional, messy, vulnerable corners of womanhood that platitudes and good intentions can't reach. Tori Peters brilliantly and fearlessly navigates the most dangerous taboos around gender, sex, and relationships, gifting us a thrillingly original, witty, and deeply moving novel. So, I tried to get that one too, but I saw you had it, so I'm like, oh, move on. It's on a lot of lists. <laughs> that one's on a lot of lists. And my third pick is trying to cut the glare a little bit. Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Sands, if I'm pro pronouncing that correctly, published in 2012. And this is a YA book. I know, Jill, you've read this. A couple good. of the high school students <laughs> who are volunteering with us at the prize table this summer read this, and they liked it a lot. So I picked this one out of the YA collection. It's a lyrical novel about family and friendship. Um, Aristotle is an angry teen, and Dante is a know-it-all who has an unusual way of looking at the world. When the two Latino boys meet at the swimming pool, they seem to have nothing in common. But as the loners start spending time together, they discover that they share a special friendship, the kind that changes lives and lasts a lifetime. Dante teaches Aristotle, or Ari, how to swim. The two lead different lives, with Dante as the confident son of professors and Ari as a shy boy from a modest background and a brother in prison. But as the two boys get closer, this author portrays a multitude of positive forms of masculinity and also positive relationships between boys as they transition into young men. It's through the friendships of the two boys that we learn the most important truths about themselves and the kind of people that they want to be. Between a couple of traumatic accidents, lots of letters, a reunion, and a coming out story, this author is able to explore issues of authenticity, LGBT relationships, and family. So, Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. Got three thumbs up by people that are here this summer. <laughs> Very good. I like that it has Latino <laughs> main characters too. It covers a lot of genres there. Okay, this is by the author of Little Fires Everywhere, Celeste Nig. It's called Everything I Never Told You. Um, this begins, so begins this exquisite novel about a Chinese-American family living in the 1970s small town Ohio. Lydia is the favorite child of Marilyn and James Lee, and her parents are determined that she will fulfill the dreams they were unable to pursue. But when Lydia's body is found in a local lake, a delicate balancing act that has been keeping the Lee family together is destroyed, tumbling into chaos. It's a profoundly moving story of family secrets and longing. Everything I Never Told You is a gripping page turner and a sensitive family portrait uncovering the ways in which mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, husbands and wives struggle all their lives to understand each other. So one the reason I have this one is one of the characters in this book, Nath, he's not one of them, well, he's the son 
Um, he struggles with his sexual identity and the roles he feels obligated to as a son and an older brother and as a boy going into manhood. So it's very good. It's been rated very well on Goodreads. Did you read that one, Jill? No, but I did read her Little Fires Yeah, everywhere. I did too. I did good read author. this one, though. <laughs> it's older. My fourth pick is a new book. This is Pieces, which just came out in 2021. It's the prize-winning best-selling author of Gingerbread, Boy Snowbird, and What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours. She returns with a vivid and inventive new novel about a couple forever changed by an unusual train voyage. When Otto and Xavier Shin declare their love, an aunt gifts them a trip on a sleeper train to mark their new commitment and to get them out of her house. Setting off with their pet mongoose, <laughs> these two arrive at the sleepy train station, but quickly deduce that the lucky day is no ordinary locomotive. Their trip on this former tea smuggling train has been curated beyond their wildest imaginations, complete with mysterious and welcoming touches like ingredients for their favorite breakfast. They seem to be the only people on board until Otto discovers a secretive woman, woman who issues a surprising message. As further clues and questions pile up and the trip upends everything they thought they knew, Otto and Xavier begin to seek connections to their own pasts and connections that now bind them together. It's a spellbinding tale from a star author. Pieces is about what it means to be seen by another person, whether it's your lover or a stranger on a train, and what happens when things you thought were firmly in the past turn out to be right beside you. The New York Times described this author as one who can create a universe that dazzles and wounds. So I thought that sounded interesting. This is in the new collections. So my last one today is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. Alice had her whole summer planned. Non-stop all-you-can-eat buffets while marathoning her favorite TV shows, best friends totally included, with the smallest dash of adulting, working at the library to pay her share of the rent. The only thing missing from her perfect plan? Her girlfriend who ended things when Alice confessed she's asexual. Alice is done with dating. No, thank you. Do not pass. Go stick a fork in her. Done. But then Alice meets Takumi and she can't stop thinking about him or the rom-com grade romance she feels she did not ask for. Uncertainty, butterflies, swoons, oh my. <laughs> When her blissful summer takes an unexpected turn and Takumi becomes her knight with a shiny library employee badge, close enough, Alice has to decide if she's willing to risk her friendship for a love that might not be reciprocated or understood. So, And my last pick for today is an older book. This is The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith, and this was published back in 1952. An unlikely encounter between Therese, a young sales clerk, and Carol, a lonely homemaker, leads to an amorous romance in this classic work of lesbian fiction. Struggling against the oppressive routines of their daily lives and the strict social norms governing mid-century femininity, the new lovers take to the open road where their new relationship can thrive. But their dreamy, blissful adventure is sharply interrupted when Carol must make a difficult choice between her child and her lover. This author, Patricia Highsmith, is famous for penning thrillers. You might be familiar with Strangers on a Train or the talented Mr. Ripley. She has a keen ability to create compelling characters and narratives that truly shine in her oft-overlooked classics. Um, published under a pseudonym in 1952, this lyrical prose and sensitive, well-rounded treatment of lesbian characters marked a significant departure from the stereotyped lesbian pulp fiction that had historically dominated the marketplace at that time. It's a work that demands our respect and attention. The Price of Salt is an honest and profound meditation on love and the importance of following one's heart. It was made into a movie, which you may be familiar with, called Carol, um, starring Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara back in 2015. This is a story of romantic obsession, and it may be one of the most important, but still largely unrecognized, novels of the 20th century. When it was first published, it was touted as the novel of a love that society forbids, and the book soon became a cult classic. So, oh. The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith. She was ahead of her time. She was. Well, thanks for watching. We hope that we gave you some good ideas on what to read next. Like or share our video. We always like to hear from you. And next week, we're going to be doing Shark, Shark Week. week. <laughs> so, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching today. Bye, Bye. everybody.